function operations. In here, we're going to learn how to add functions, subtract, multiply, and divide. So, let's have an example here. Given f of x is equal to negative 2x plus 1, and another given function, which is g of x, equals 3x minus 2. Okay, so here you'll be asked probably what is f plus g of x? Another question probably what is f plus g of 1? Okay, so uh, here since you're adding two functions, you're just going to think about your algebraic expressions before adding two algebraic expressions. So this is like f of x here plus g of x. And then we know what is f of x. That's over here. Negative 2x plus 1 plus our g of x. Our g of x is 3x minus 2. And then combining like terms, um, negative 2x plus 3x here, it will give us x or 1x. And then you're looking at negative 2 and 1 here, combining that. Again, 1 and minus 2, or 1 minus 2, it gives you a negative 1. Okay, so that would be our answer for adding the two functions. F plus G of X. So next, we have to answer the second question. What is F plus G of 1? So we already have the equation uh, F plus G of X, which is X plus or X minus 1. So it's over here. Again, X minus 1. So what we can do is just plugging in our X here. So our X here is actually 1. So that's our x value. So the answer would be 1 minus 1, and the answer is 0. So f plus g of 1 is 0. OK. So that's how you add two functions, and how you evaluate also by plugging in 1 here. Okay, so here's the alternate solution also. So if you want to uh, plug in your 1 directly to f of x, you can say f of 1 is equal to negative 2 times 1 plus 1 equals negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 plus 1 is a negative 1. And then you evaluate what is g of 1. Uh, g of 1, that would be 3 times negative or positive 1. So what you're doing here is just uh, looking at the g of x and replace your x with 1 or plug in 1 to x. So the answer would be 3 times 1 is 3, minus 2, that would be 1. So now, what is f plus g of 1? So you're going to have that, f plus g of 1. You're just adding f of 1 plus g of 1. Again, adding f of 1 
last g of 1. So you have negative 1 for f of 1. Last g of 1 is 1. So still you're getting the same answer. So it's a 0. So that's exactly the same as here. So either way will work for you. But here since you already have the f plus g of x so over here, you can just plug in right away the value for x, which is 1. And that's our first uh, solution here. OK. But you can do the alternate also. So we have the alternate value here or solution. So um, it will give you the same result. OK. So let's do. We're done with the addition. So it's over here. We're going to sub, subtraction now. So this is similar to, again, algebraic expressions. OK, so we'll try uh, the subtraction. So subtraction. And the given f of x is equal to negative 2x plus 1. And the g of x is equal to 3x minus 2. So here we're just subtracting. So you're going to be asked what is f minus g of x. And you are going to just uh, calculate, right? And if you're going to be asked also what is f minus g of 2, OK? So we just have to show you how to evaluate. But this is exactly for uh, multiplication and division also. So subtracting that, it gives you um, this expression. We're going to say f of x minus g of x. And our g of x and f of x is given here, uh, or are given here. So um, just plug in the values. So f of x is negative 2x plus 1 minus our g of x, which is 3x minus 2. Observe that I'm using a parenthesis here because you have two terms. And you still have to distribute your negative moving inside. So that is a must there. You have to have parentheses as a grouping symbol. So calculating, uh, we have to distribute negative times positive 3x, or you can say that's a negative 1 times 3x. It gives us negative 3x. The negative times a negative 2, that should be a plus 2. And then just combining like terms. That would be the next one. So negative 5x here. Negative 2x minus 3x negative 5x. And then combining the constant terms, 1 plus 2, that should be plus 3 here. So here's our answer. Okay, our answer is negative 5x plus 3. So that's the difference um, from f of x and g of x. And then if you're going to be asked what is f minus g of 2, you just plug that in to what we've got a while ago, the difference. Negative 5 times your x, which is 2 now plus 3, and that would be negative 10 plus 3. So you will get f minus g of 2 equals to negative 7. So that would be our answer. Again, it's negative 7. So this is similar to what we did in the previous example, only we're subtracting instead of adding. 
And if you're going to be asked what's the domain, okay, so let's add one more just in case you'll be asked about the domain here. Remember, this is a negative uh, number, it's negative five, it's like your slope. So that's negative, so the line should be going this way, it's decreasing. So it means the domain would be all real numbers, negative infinity, comma infinity. So that's how you find your domain. Okay. If you're going to be asked about the range, it's just actually the same. So range is also negative infinity or infinity. Okay, so from previous section, we learned how to uh, read the domain and range. So domain is for x values, range would be for y values. Okay, and that's a, a line there decreasing, so it means the mean and range are the same. Okay, so next, how about if you multiply uh, two functions? So really work on f of x here, which is negative 2x plus 1, and then g of x is equal to 2x minus 2. So multiplying, it's the same as multiplying two algebraic expressions or two binomials. So the sign here, it's a period multiplying. You can actually put like a period here times your g and of x. So that's multiplying. So that's what we're looking for. Okay. So you can also say instead of uh, this as f times g, you can express that as fg. That's uh, still the same thing. It's sim similar to f dot g. So they are just the same. Means multiplying. So what is f times g of x equals f of x times g of x. So we're just multiplying f of x. It's a negative 2x plus 1 times 3x minus 2. So here, it's like you're multiplying two binomials. So you apply again the rule of the previous section. First terms, you multiply outer terms, inner terms, and last terms. Okay, so when you multiply that, it gives us um, negative 6x squared. Okay, so that's the first terms. And then the outer terms would be multiplied also. And that would be plus 4x. And then our inner terms will be multiplied 1 times 3x. The answer would be plus 3x. And then last terms, 1 times negative 2, it will give us negative 2. And then combining like terms, uh, negative uh, 6x squared, you don't have anything that is x squared there, so you can copy that. You can only combine the middle terms. For x plus 3x, you have plus uh, 7x minus 2. So this would be our answer here. This is the product of multiplying the two functions. And if you're going to analyze the expression, 
you have a power of two here. So it means it's a parabola and you have a negative. So the parabola, it's actually opening downward. And if you're going to be asked what's the domain, then you will know. So domain here, actually it's all real numbers. So it's negative infinity and infinity because it occupies all the x values. If you're going to be asked about the range, you have to find the vertex here first. Again, if you're going to be asked about the range, find the vertex so you will know the exact location of the vertex before yeah, you can write the range because range is dependent on the location of the vertex because that's the highest value for you, the wider. Okay, but in this section, we're only asked for the domain anyway. So let's go for the uh, division of uh, two functions or dividing two functions. So given f of x here is equal to negative 2x plus 1 and g of x is equal to 3x minus 2. So if you're going to be asked uh, to divide this so you're going to have f divided by g of x. So you're trying to divide f of x divided by g of x. And you plug in the expressions. Negative 2x plus 1, that's the value for f of x, divided by g of x, 3x minus 2. And then analyze it. So when you're analyzing this, some people will cancel this out. Uh, the axis, which is not possible because you have a plus here and a minus sign here. And then uh, you might combine also the constant, which you can't. So for example, you have 10 there and then you have a 2. You cannot do that because of the plus and the minus. So this is uh, just a separate example. So you cannot combine the 10 and the 2. 10 divided by 2, you cannot do that. So 1 divided by 2 also, you can't. So similarly on this part here. So what do you think is the answer? The answer is just negative 2x plus 1 all over 3x minus 2. And that would be our uh, answer. Okay, so that's the rational expression answer for division of two functions. Now, in case you'll be asked again, what's the domain? If you're asked about the domain here, in this section again, you are only asked for the domain. So, what if you'll be asked on that? You just set the bottom equal to zero to find the domain. So you go 3x minus 2 equals 0. And then solve for your x here. You divide 3 on both sides, so x therefore is equal to 2 thirds. Now the two-third here, when you plug that in back here to the denominator, it gives you a zero. Remember, if you have anything on the top, you divide it by the zero, then it means you have undefined. So that is where the graph is broken. So if you graph the whole expression here in a graphic calculator, you have this uh, broken part. So we call this as the vertical asymptote as we continue with the next section. So that is the broken part of the graph. So it means if that is the broken part, when you write your 
set interval notation, you go negative infinity and you have two third, which the graph is stopping there. So it's approaching to that value, but if it will not touch that value because it's undefined. So you use parenthesis here, u two third comma infinity. So that's how you write the domain. Okay. You have only one broken part also because this is power of one here, as you can see for uh, the degree of that expression, power of one for uh, x. So again, x power of one. So it means you have only one uh, broken part of the graph. It's on two thirds. Okay, next would be difference quotient. Now, the first quotient, uh, let me fix the one. Okay, so should be difference quotient. Okay, so difference quotient. Uh, so, what do you mean by difference? A difference would be the uh, result of subtracting two numbers. Quotient means the result of dividing two numbers. So, we have a formula here for functions. So, we have f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So, example here. Let's say you're given with f of x is equal to 2x plus 1. So what you can do is applying the formula. So that's what we don't know. And this one we already know. So that's exactly the one over here. And this one is just an arbitrary variable, the h. There's no value for h here. So what we're doing next is just finding first what is f x plus h or f of x plus h so we're looking at f of x here so that should be 2x where x has a value of x plus h plus 1 again make a note that this is our x here. Okay, so remember this is usually write, written as f of x. So that should be the value for our x here. And then you distribute. That's 2 times x is 2x, 2 times h plus 2h plus 1. Okay, so that would be our f of x plus h. Okay, so that's the answer. So we're not done yet because we have to apply the formula. So apply the formula now. So we are here now. So we just copy that. You go 2x plus uh, 2h plus 1 minus our f of x. Our f of x is here. So that should be, that's given. Put a grouping symbol, 2x plus 1, all over h. And then we distribute this part here. So let's just copy the first three terms, 2x plus 2h plus 1, minus 2x minus 1, distributing the negative sign. And again, what we're doing is distributing negative times positive 2x. We got this part and negative times uh, positive 1. We have a negative 1. 
and then combining like terms, this cancels out. And then one minus one cancels out. And then you will get uh, 2H over H. And at this time, you have a, a single term on the top divided by your H, which is a single term. So you can cancel variable here. So the answer would be 2. So again, that's the difference quotient. So just applying the formula here and actually calculate. And our final answer is 2 for this example. Okay, memorize the difference quotient formula.